Hey y'all, let's do this natural makeup look and hair for church. You will probably hear my children talking or playing with the iPad in the background. I'm a stay at home mom y'all, so let's get into it. I was going to start by taking down my hair, but then I was like, no, I'm just going to let my curls marinate just a little bit longer while I do my makeup. To my lips, I'm going to add a little aquaphor, and this is going to be crucial for when I actually put on my lipstick because you don't want dry lips and lipstick. Not a good combo. Next, I'm going to spray my face with CoverGirl Prep and Set Mist. This just adds another layer of moisture after I've done my skincare routine. Dry my face with my little fan that I got from Dollar Tree in the $5 section. And for primer, I like to use the e.l.f. Power Grip Primer, the green kind. I know they have a pink kind, but I haven't tried that one yet. So for my eyebrows, I'm using the Gimme Brow by Benefit. I really like this product because it is like a brow gel and a brow tint all in one. The color I have is color three, which is described as like a medium brown. Um, and so sometimes I feel like I have to kind of swipe a lot onto my eyebrows in order to like kind of fill them in or get them to the desired level of color that I want. But overall, I really do like this product and I don't know if they have a darker color than this medium brown. I'm pretty sure they do, but I've just actually never looked it up. I should probably do that, huh? Next, I'm using the I Am Magic Concealer by Juvia's Place in the color 14. This concealer is very, very full coverage, like full coverage enough to be foundation if you really wanted it to be. So I have just found that the best place for me to use this is around my eyebrows to carve them out. I've tried to use this underneath my eyes as like a highlight, but it was just way too heavy for me to put underneath my eyes. Like when I tell you my fine lines were saying hello before I did, it, it was bad. So. I do not recommend this <laughs> underneath the eyes, but definitely for eyebrows. And then also it works very well as a eyeshadow primer. So I like to drag it down onto my eyelid after I get done carving out my eyebrows. And this concealer is one to two shades lighter than my actual skin tone. And I personally like using a lighter concealer around my eyebrows. I know some makeup artists call this the halo effect around your eyebrows where, you know, it does look lighter than the rest of your face. But I personally like that look on me. If you don't like that look on you, then I would suggest that you use a concealer that matches your skin tone. Then I'm going to blend out my concealer using this Putty Primer Brush by e.l.f. It's a soft brush, but it's also very dense. And so I've just found that it blends my concealer very, very well. And also blending out your concealer around your eyebrows um, also kind of helps with that halo effect I was talking about. For my eyeshadow today, I'm really not doing eyeshadow, but I really do want some color on my eyelids. So I'm going to use the Juvia's Place bronzed palette um, in the color dark to just add a little color to my eyelids. I am going to use tape just because I do still want that very clean look and I don't want the bronzer going all over that eye area. When you add tape, make sure that you line up the tape with your bottom lash line. So with the fluffy brush, I'm just gonna take that top bronze color, which is like the lighter one out of the two, and just put that all over my brow bone and all over my lid. I'm doing this very carefully because I do have on the Falscara lashes, which I will link that video above, so you can go watch that tutorial and review. But I do have those lashes on, and so I'm not trying to get um, a lot of product on those lashes so they could last me for a couple of days. And after I apply this bronzer all over my lid, I'm also not going to use eyeliner today just for the exact same reason that I do not want to get a lot of product on my lashes so that they will last me. All done with my eyes. Now I'm going to very gently take off the tape. Whenever you are taking off that tape, please be very, very gentle because that eye area is one of the most delicate parts of your face. Once I finish my eyes, I am going to start doing my foundation. This is the NARS foundation in the color Caracas. 
I like to apply this foundation to the back of my hand and then dip my beauty blender into that. I have found that using this technique, number one, prevents me from using too much makeup. So the makeup that I'm purchasing is lasting longer. A lot of influencers use a lot of makeup and you need to because you're on camera, right? But for everyday makeup, you don't need all of that. And this is an everyday makeup look because I'm going to church. I'm about to walk out of my house. And so whenever you cake on a lot of makeup, that's what makes you look cakey and it settles into fine lines and it just does not look good. Now this particular day, I was not feeling my best, so I knew I wanted to wear a mask as I was going throughout my day. The mask was gonna be rubbing up against my nose, so I wanted to try this technique that I saw on YouTube to keep makeup on your nose. Now be mindful that when you are putting your foundation on the rest of your face, you're gonna leave your nose for last. You're gonna take some setting spray and you're going to spray that onto your makeup applicator and then pat that all over your nose. And then you're gonna take your makeup sponge, do not add any more product, but just pat on your nose whatever excess product is left on your beauty blender. And then you're gonna spray some more setting spray onto your makeup applicator and then pat that all over your nose. Now that's what I did. And I can't really remember what the actual video that I watched on YouTube said to do, but that's what I did. And it actually worked pretty well. And that's actually a theater trick that they use doing stage plays and stuff. And they actually use hairspray instead of setting spray. So same kind of deal. I apply my concealer to the back of my hand and then dip my beauty blender into that and then apply that to my face. And once again, I have just found that that is helping my makeup to not look cakey, especially in that under eye area. Area, you do not want to apply a whole lot of makeup because that's what makes your fine lines look extra extra defined I have also found that by looking up while I am applying my makeup in the under eye area is also helping my makeup to not settle into fine lines it's just making that application very smooth and the type of concealer also matters when you are applying makeup in that under eye area um, I'm using the elf camo concealer and it's also a full coverage concealer and so by applying it to the back of my hand and then dipping my beauty blender into that is also contributing to a very smooth application. And I'm adding just a little bit more so that I can add some concealer and some highlight to the other areas of my face, like my chin and on my forehead. And I added a way too much to my chin because I am sitting here blending forever. And even then, it still didn't blend out all the way like I really needed it to. So I'm going to be blending for a while. And this is the Juvia's Place Liquid Blush, which I absolutely love, in the color Rosy Posy. I am also going to apply this to the back of my hand and then dip my beauty blender into that and then apply it to my face. This liquid blush, baby, let me tell you, it is so highly pigmented that applying it directly to your face can go real bad real quick. So <laughs> putting it on the back of my hand and then dipping it into the beauty blender, I've just found kind of diffuses the color a little bit better. And so it gives you more of a natural look and a natural finish versus very clownish if you're not careful. So now I'm going to apply some finishing powder to my face using this powder puff. And I'm gonna do my under eye area. I'm gonna do my nose, my forehead, my chin, and like along my jawline where I don't have concealer, but I do have foundation. And since I'm wearing a white shirt today, I wanna make sure that my makeup is set in place and it's not going to move. So transfer is not necessarily a bad thing, um, but if, you, if your entire face is sliding off, then you definitely wanna rethink some things. Since my skin is just naturally on the drier side, I do not allow my powders to bake like some you know, people do because the longer you let it bake, the drier your face is. And for me, I do not like a dry face. Like I like to look as creamy as I possibly can. And like I said, because my face naturally tends to be dry, I don't wanna be extra dry with this all this powder so I tend to buff it off um, rather quickly after applying now I'm gonna apply the blush this is the Juvia's place blush in volume 4 
and this pairs so well with my liquid blush um and i'm kind of using this powder blush to in a sense kind of set my liquid blush and to reinforce that color now I'm going to use the bronzer palette that I showed before by Juvia's Place in the color dark to add some color back to my face or to add some warmth back to my face. Bronzer can be used to contour to like kind of chisel and define your features or it can be used to just bring some warmth back and so that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to use it around my cheeks and then also along my forehead like along my hairline and then sometimes I use it along my jawline as well but not today. And because I really didn't do eyeshadow and I didn't add any eyeliner to my eyes, I am going to add some mascara to my lower lash line just to bring a little bit more life to my eyes. And I'm gonna put my glasses on so I can check my progress and see how I did. I did not put my contacts in because I just didn't feel like it. So um, now I'm going to set my face. I actually ended up setting my face twice and that's just what I've been doing lately. This is the Morphe Continuous Setting Spray. I'm gonna do a red lip today and I don't know, I feel like I'm in my auntie era because red has just become my thing. I got red nails, red glasses, I'm about to do red lips. Had to check in on my eyebrows cause they wasn't looking exactly how I wanted. So anyways, I'm gonna use the Cherry Lip Liner by MAC to line my lips. If you really wanna set it off with your red lips, then make sure you add a little black to that liner, okay? Start with the red, but then get you a black liner and line your lips with black as well. And I don't know what it does, but adding black to red, it just, whew, it takes your lips to a whole other level. After I use the black, I'm gonna take the red and use that again just to kind of blend out that black and kind of diffuse it a little bit more because I still want red to be the main color, but that black just adds a little extra oomph to it. And I forgot to mention that the black lip liner is Alien by NYX. Once I finish lining my lips, then I'm going to take my MAC lipstick, Ruby Woo, and add that all over my lips, woo! I love me a good red lip. And I just learned how to do it by watching a TikTok video. I'm telling you, TikTok will teach you some stuff if you're paying attention. So I made a mistake while I was putting my lipstick on and I got some lipstick that was just like on my face. So I took my concealer brush that I use for my eyebrows and just kind of cleaned up my red lips and make sure to blend out that concealer and I also make sure to use my finger to get the lipstick off the inside of my mouth because red lipstick on teeth just isn't cute any lipstick on teeth isn't cute so just make sure that you are cleaning out the inside of your mouth and if you make a mistake just use some concealer and clean it up now I'm going to set my face for the second time with Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray love it after I finished my makeup, it was time to take down my hair. I did do a video on this style and I will link that above so you can take a look at that. For this particular time that I did this style, I did not start on freshly washed hair. I just started on old curls and just re-moisturized and redid it. That's why you see like the end of my hair right there is like really frizzy because I guess I just didn't add enough product to the end like I should have, but it actually ended up working out really well. I thought it was gonna give me like horrible, horrible results in curls, but you'll see, it didn't. Using my black castor oil by Barbie Organics to take down my hair. This oil is amazing because it is so lightweight, has a faint smell of peppermint, and it helps to tame flyaways. So, so good.
Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, y'all.